Here's something interesting. Democrats are actually campaigning for a hard right Trump supported Republican uh, in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, as is the district uh, represented currently by Peter Meyer, who is one of the Republicans who actually voted for Trump's impeachment. So they are the TCCC is running ads uh, in inadvertently. They're not there. It's a it's a kind of confusing situation uh, about how uh, Meyer's primary opponent, uh, this John Gibbs candidate is is really really in line with trump and really conservative and isn't that scary with the hopes that republican voters will see that think that john gibbs is the is the more conservative candidate then gibbs will win the primary and then be actually be easier to defeat than peter meyer because peter meyer has more you know centrist and across the aisle appeal because of the impeachment vote and thus democrats uh, will win the seat. So how about that, Brianna? It's, yeah, it's like a Pied Piper approach, which worked out so well when they did this with Donald Trump, right? Elevating the candidate you think it's going to be easier to beat, even if they are more conservative and antithetical to the interests of your party. You say, OK, I'm so confident in my ability as the Democratic Party to win elections that I'm going to set myself up to have to beat someone who is even worse for me if they win. If I were the Democratic Party, I wouldn't have that much hubris, given what my track record was. <laughs> but this is what they've done. But we should watch this ad. Yeah, watch. Right, it is very confusing, <laughs> the posture of the whole thing, when you actually watch the ad. Yeah, let's play it. John Gibbs is too conservative for West Michigan. Handpicked by Trump to run for Congress, Gibbs called Trump the greatest president and worked in Trump's administration with Ben Carson. Gibbs has promised to push that same conservative agenda in Congress a hard line against immigrants at the border, and so-called patriotic education in our schools. The Gibbs-Trump agenda is too conservative for West Michigan. DCCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. <laughs> so in, ca in case you're confused, <laughs> Democrats put that ad out. Democrats. That's, that looks like a positive campaign ad to me because they want conservative Republicans, Trump supporters in the district, it's, I, I guess it's a closely split district right now, to support Gibbs instead of Peter Meyer yeah, in the primary. Yeah, it, it's like, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a DCCC it's like ad, chess. so you have to make it negative, I guess, but it's negative in the way that when you go on a job interview, they ask you about your worst qualities, and you say, I'm just too organized. <laughs> I just work too hard. <laughs> like, that's the, uh, that's the Republican uh, version of that. Tough on the border, good friends with Trump, works with uh, Carson, you know. It, it reads as an ad to anyone who isn't already, you know, un, unaligned with those kinds of um, politics. And what uh, some in the uh, media are pointing out, because there's a Politico article about this, there's a New York Times article about this. How can Democrats simultaneously say Trump is an existential threat, unique among all Republicans, Trump is the vile one, we're, we're having these hearings, look what he did on January 6th, look what he's done to our democracy. Trump is the threat and, and we Republicans, all good Republicans like Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger should join with us to stop this existential threat. How can they say that on one hand and then be like, and, and we're putting out a message. They're put, we're putting out a, a campaign ad because we'd like you to vote for the Trumpier candidate. Yeah. I mean, the existential threat to the Democratic Party is not having Trump and Trumpism around because the only way they've managed to be successful of late <laughs> is, is running against Trump. Trump. Yeah. Yeah. So, he, right, here's a, here's a guy, Peter Meyer. I, you know, to admit, I, I quite like the guy. He's someone sort of resembling my uh, idea, a libertarian mm -hmm. version of republicanism. Uh, did what Democrats say you should do, the right thing, voted for impeachment, was was not mealy-mouthed about it. He was interviewed on a multiple uh, news outlets, some podcasts afterwards saying, yeah, what I saw on January 6th was horrible. Very little doubt in my mind that what Trump said contributed to it. Th like, this is what you want, Democrats. This is what you want. And uh, they're punishing this guy and, and might get, could very well just have, the, have Gibbs win and then have Gibbs win the, the seat, and then you have then you have someone who is more like, and I don't know John Gibbs' exact politics, but certainly someone who is would be more likely to object to an election or whatever, and to, to do all the things, again, you're saying are existential threats to our democracy. Yeah, the whole Democratic Party rhetorical project is falling apart. You claim Trump is an existential threat, you boost Trump voters. You claim uh, Trump, Trump candidates. You claim that uh, the overturning of Roe v. Wade is the worst thing that's ever happened to the Democratic Party. You run 
uh, Henry Cuellar to beat a young Latina who, by the way, you also say you care a lot about identity politics, but you run Henry Cuellar to go and beat her who is an, an anti-choice candidate. You have Democratic uh, groups courting funding from DMFI and other pro-Israel groups to attack and defeat even Jewish candidates. Uh, Mehdi Hassan had a great uh, uh, segment on this the other day. So they're fundraising from these groups to attack members of the constituents that they say the Democratic Party cares about uh, and supports. And it really is, I mean, I think Republicans have been onto this for a little while, not always in good faith, but they have accurately identified the cloak and mirrors of a lot of the Democratic Party rhetoric. And whereas Democrats used to at least be able to claim, well, we stand up for the little guy, we care a lot about labor, we care about historically marginalized groups, we're going to be there for you in the struggle, they're literally boosting people whose goal is to attack the very communities that they say that they stand for, leaving a lot of voters thinking, well, what is the point of you anyway? And just to familiarize anyone who's forgot this, as you alluded to, this was the Hillary Clinton strategy. Mm -hmm. She wanted Trump. The team wanted yes. Trump. We, they wanted Trump to win the primary because they thought he would be the easiest candidate yes. to beat. They could not have been more wrong, <laughs> obviously. Yep. He won. Uh, it's not even clear if he would have been the easiest candidate to beat in actuality. I'm not sure that is the case. They, they, I mean, it was the most clueless campaign that's ever been run in the history of time, but... Uh, but uh, yeah, even he was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> they, they told Trump he won the last time around, and he said, really? <laughs> the first time, yeah, yeah. yeah. This time he said he won anyway, when he didn't. But uh, anyway, I feel like we, I should do some counter-programming here. Like, Brianna, before the cameras were rolling, she was talking about how the left is most afraid of Peter Meyer. So if any of you Trump Republicans are watching, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. We're not campaigning for anyone of any sort, but thought we should call out this kind of... Uh, little bit of trickery from Democrats, which uh, which you said you thought was pretty obnoxious it's as well. It's pretty obnoxious. I'd, I'd like to see them putting this energy into actually supporting the kind of candidates who are aligned with what the average voter in America wants across the aisle. I don't know, can you put this kind of energy behind a $15 minimum wage push or something <laughs> actually popular? All right, well, tomorrow on Rising, Ryan Grimm and Emily Jashinsky will be with you for Rising Fridays. And, you know, you can like, share, and subscribe to the podcast so you never miss any of our content. And for those of you who like to listen on the go, we are available anywhere you listen to podcasts. And be sure to check us out on the Plex TV app. Love a smart TV app. Woo! <laughs> All right, bye, guys. See you later.